Uh, certainly a, a first round victory, kind of your signature move, uh, impressive performance all the way around. How did you feel about tonight? Amazing. You know, uh, it's always nice when you have a hard and long work behind you and then you come and you perform like this and you get the victory, especially like in the first round. It feels amazing. Talk about the emotion coming in. I mean, how important was this? I know you were very, very disappointed last time. And, you know, then you had about rescheduled and it's been this long time. So how important was it to go in there and do what you did tonight? Well, after my last fight, you know, uh, my heart was broken. You know, I was never in, a, in that kind of a shape. I was feeling okay before the fight week and everything in New York and but I was terrified when in the fight day my weight was 69 kgs and I had to fight against one of the best guys you know in this division in UFC and especially like in the Madison Square Garden when I where I had a huge opportunity to make a statement and show the whole world what what I'm about and then you are in that kind of a condition and yeah, it was a, uh, in the other hand, I'm really grateful and thankful that that happened to me because it woke the, the giant in me. And uh, when I got back home, you know, I just gave a uh, one month of a time to myself, you know, to rethink everything and ask myself what I want from this life. And then I decided to do this again, but with this time, you know, it's me who is taking the decisions and making the decisions. So this is the result of that. I was surprised to hear you tell John Anik, you know, you, you wanted to prove that you belong here. I feel like you've done that already. Do you feel like, you know, people doubt you or that you still have to show that you belong in the UFC? Well, no, but like I said, I was 69 kg at the fight moment, probably 68. I was in the hospital with three IVs on me, you know, doctor was asking me, you know, is something broken? I said, the whole body. And they filmed absolutely everything in me. And uh, they said, nothing is broken, but you know, your potassium level is really high and sodium is like zero. So with that to be said, you know, in the fight, after one minute against, you know, Shane Burgers, who is a huge to featherweight and having him in front of me and everything was cloudy, what I saw. And I was thinking like, God, there is 14 minutes left that how am I going to survive? So basically I was just fighting with my heart and I was extremely lucky that I survived, that I was, I'm alive, that I'm here, like when I asked the doctor when he said nothing is broken and he told me the reason why I felt that way. You know, I asked the doctor, you know, does it mean that I can leave? He said, well, this is not a prison. You can leave whenever you want. But if you leave, you have to sign this paper because you can have a heart attack and die. And I said, just fuck it. Take this, you know, stuff out of my system. I just want to go and show my mom and my family that I'm still alive because the way I people saw me in that fight, I think, you know, my family was thinking that I'm, you know, in a, such a bad condition that but next day I was walking and I was okay again. And I knew that if in that condition, I could take almost three rounds against this guy, what, how am I going to perform when I'm fully me? And this is what I'm about. This is what you saw now. This is my point. Once you got the choke locked in, I mean, he was defending for a little bit. I'm curious what was going through your head. Did you think I might have to let go of this so I don't burn my arms out? Or, or did you know? No, this no, is no, 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 no. If I get that choke, I have a, one rule. I don't stop. And that's it. I stop when you are sleeping and John Cavanaugh knows this one. He knows that if I secure that lock, it's a go time. Right. Last thing for me, of course, that was a big win. So what's the plan now? I mean, it sounds like you're feeling a lot better. I mean, do you want to fight more frequently now? Do you have plans? What's next? 
Listen, I don't want to sound cocky or anything. You know, I've been so professional for the past six months that uh, yesterday I said to my coach, I said my strength and my condition coach, Vilio, I said to him, I said, listen, we are going to take this fight. Whatever will happen, we will get back to the hotel and we will do a small session because 15 minutes is not a solid session yet. So we are, we are going to get back to the hotel, train a bit, get back to uh, Finland and start the training next week. Did you, uh, did you have to tell the referee that he was unco unconscious or did the referee get it in time? Well, maybe a second before the referee came between us, you know, he was checking that if he is awake, but I felt that he is not awake. And that, that, that's never nice when you know that somebody's out and you don't want to hold the choke. You're getting a lot of praise online for like lifting his legs up and trying to help him out and get, get him awake again. Do you think that's something we should see more of in the sport? Just that sort of, it's only competition. There's no need to treat it like a really aggressive fight. Well, I, I've been that kind of a dude that kind of a fighter, I thought, you know, you know, you have to get your name and everything that people will recognize you when you do, a, you know, when you bully a bit and stuff. But in the end, you know, I just want a peaceful life for me, for everyone. And when it comes to a fighting, I've been doing this all my life. And uh, when I see somebody, you know, ahead of me in that octagon, I feel a huge respect towards him because I know that he didn't come to that point, you know, without a work. So, and I, w I wouldn't, you know, perform the way I did without Henry or any other opponent. So I think I have, you know, grown up from that, that, that I have been childish and everything. So I'm 31 years old. I don't want to, you know, if I have kids in future that they look that, that my dad is, you know, acting like a foolish so they can do the same thing. No, you know, I want to be a respectful towards my opponent then this is the real side of me. Congrats. Thank you. Just have a quick one. Uh, you mentioned in your post fights interview that uh, you feel you, 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 you couldn't catch anyone with, with that move on the ground. Who do you think would give you the most trouble on, on the ground at 145? <laughs> to be honest, I don't know. You know, every time uh, when I've been at, in the gym, we, we have a, a lot of, you know, grappling sessions in Ireland. And uh, every time there is uh, newcomers, you know, at the gym, you know, visiting SPG or coming from another countries, if they are black belts, John Kavanaugh always, you know, let them, you know, roll with the other guys a few rounds. And then they say, like, and then he's like, go with Mac one. And very next second, I will catch them with darts or any kind of a choke. And then he's like uh, smiling. But yeah, I can catch anyone with that one. Uh, I don't want to sound cocky, but I have a solid choke when it comes to Anaconda. There's a featherweight in the UFC called Kron Gracie. You like to attach yourself against him one day? Anyone, you know, I've never said no to UFC. If there is someone UFC will offer me, I always say yes. If the time is right, if my, if I'm healthy and I feel, you know, I don't want to ever, ever get back to that octagon when I don't feel that I'm fully me. So if I'm, if I feel solid and the timing is right, yes, I will fight anyone.